Hi, Matthew here. Today I'm going to share an Octatrack workflow tutorial. This is something I developed to help me make songs as fast as I possibly could using four bar loops on the Octatrack. The idea behind it is that I have a flex track on track seven that is uh, recording quantized four bar loops. And then as I save those recordings, they're being placed on either static or flex tracks one through six. And then at the very end, you place the last one on seven and you have this seven layer project. It's really cool. And if you save it as a template, it allows you to make music really fast with whatever pieces of gear you have in your studio. So this method is pretty similar to the resampling method, which I've done a tutorial on, except for we're not using the resampling as a means to transition from one part to the next, though we still can do that. We're actually using the recordings in that recording buffer and saving them across the tracks. So the first things that we're gonna to need to do is change our pattern settings. So function plus pattern, change the scale mode to per track, then go into your scale page here and go down to your master, hold function and turn that until it gets to 64. Then go ahead and do 64 as well for track seven. After that, place down a playback trig, hold function, go into the record, set up one, and put down another trig. This is a record trig. Then press function, hit that trig to turn it into a one-shot trig. Now go ahead and change the R length to 64, which is the length of track seven, and turn loop off, because we don't need that. And then hold down the trig, deselect C and D, and leave it on internal. And something I forgot to do earlier is go into project, go into control, audio, and change track eight to a master track. So back in this recording page, it's set to source three. Go ahead and change that to track eight. Track eight is the master track, so all the audio is gonna get funneled through the master track, which is exactly what we want. So now let's go over to track seven. We know we need a flex track because it's going to be recording. So one of the first things that we do is we turn the level all the way to 127 so it doesn't attenuate any volumes coming from outboard gear. So what we hear is what we get. Double press source, choose a flex track. Um, you can leave slice on or off, that doesn't matter. I'm gonna turn loop off. And then we're going to select the correct recording buffer. It's track seven, we need recording buffer seven. Cool. So at this point, we're actually, we're ready to go for recording on track seven. But for this method, which is imitating a bit of the resampling method, we have a couple more steps to go. Okay, our flex track is all set up. So we're ready to create our recording scene. So like I said before, this is based off of the resampling method. So the way it's gonna function is we're going to make recordings on track seven. We're gonna use the crossfader, move over to the right, and we'll only hear our recording and we'll no longer hear um, what we were sampling. And the idea is just to use track seven as a place to bring audio in and save files to tracks, which it will automatically do for us. So what we're gonna do is go into our mixer setting here and hold down uh, scene B, and I like to do it on 16, and then we're gonna do X direct minimum, which means that it's going to stop all the audio from coming in. We'll no longer hear it once we're all the way over to the right side of the crossfader. So make sure it's also the direct is set to 127 so that you have unattenuated volumes, which I keep hammering on. Okay, cool. So now go to your amp setting. Again, we're on track seven. This is where this is all happening. And track B, just push down on the, on the D encoder here and it will save it at zero. And then turn the volume all the way down. That way uh, we can't hear our samples on top of the instruments coming in. So over here will be the live instruments, over here will be the recorded version. Okay, we have our recording scene set up. We're ready to do our first layer. I have a couple tracks of MIDI that I have a pattern recorded that I threw together real quick that's being sent into my modular and we're going to record those four bar patterns and layer those tracks on top of each other to create a quick song. 
So to demonstrate how this is working, I'm gonna let this auth oscillator um, play out. And when I move over, it goes to silence. That's because this would be the recorded version on the right-hand side, so we no longer are able to hear live instruments. Only the tracks that we have assigned and the recorded version. Essentially, you only hear what's inside the Octatrack when you're over here. I think that's a good way to explain it. Okay, let's put this up here. I'm going to hit the mix button. I'm going to leave uh, track MIDI track 2 unmuted, and we're going to record it. So hold track 7, hit yes to arm it. Let's go in the audio editor so we can watch it do its magic. Now we can fade over. This is the recorded version we're listening to now. To prove that, I can turn this volume down. And you're still hearing that because of a sequencer I have on the modular. Um, cool, you get the idea? So now hit function, record three, save this recording. Just, I'm gonna leave it at this weird arbitrary name and assign it to free static. Hopefully it puts on track one. I mean, I know it will. Okay, cool. Assign to static one. So now we're gonna go over to track one and place down a playback trig. I'm gonna go back into mix and I'm gonna mute that MIDI track so that I don't hear it, which doesn't matter anyway, because I had the volume on the fader turned all the way down anyhow. So now we can hear our recorded version. Just to show you that it's recorded. Right, so we have our first layer. Super cool. All right, now let's do another layer. This one will get automatically saved to track two. Um, hit mix, I'm gonna unmute MIDI channel three. And I'm going to actually mute track one because I don't want that to be recorded into this next recording. Don't need a double of the kick drum. So hold track seven, hit yes to arm it. Let's watch it do its thing. Cool. All right, now let's go ahead and this is our recorded version. Cool. Let's save it. Function record three, save this recording, save, sign to free static, puts it on track two for us. Cool. Let's go ahead and do this, and let's hear the two together. Make sure you place down a playback trig again. And for this uh, last little track, I recorded 64 steps. So let's make this 64 steps long. We're ready for the next layer. Okay, let's record our last two layers. I go into the mix menu and we're going to do track MIDI track one. This is what it's gonna sound like. Save these tracks and uh, turn our recorder on. And here it goes. This is the recorded version. Sounds pretty good. Turn this off. Cool. All right, let's save it. Save this recording. Yes, assign to a free static. It'll put it on track three. We got a playback trig on track three, and it's four bars long, so we should hear this all together now. You can see the faders turned down, so we're just listening to the audio in the octave track. Cool. Now let's do our fourth layer, and that's where I'm going to stop. You can do as many layers as you want, but I have already recorded a lot of this. Okay, so here we go. Track four on MIDI. Gonna, let's hear how it sounds. Cool. I'm going to mute these. 
arm, whoops, arm track seven. Let's do it. Recorded version. Sounds good. Okay. Save this recording. Cool. Assign. Puts it on four for us. Awesome. Let's go to track four. Playback trig. Four bars long. We got our little song. So now you understand how easy this can be and uh, maybe it makes the Octatrack not seem so mysterious to you. One of the last things that I'm gonna cover and then I'm gonna be done is one of the other cool parts about this setup is that you can just easily resample yourself. So what we can do is mute these tracks and we have this recording here, we can mess with it. Maybe let's reverse it. We'll make some cool sounds. Okay, we'll record it like this. Um, so track seven, arm record. I was looking at the wrong thing. It's a recorded version. Let's go back to this one and put it back to normal. And set this back to normal as well. Cool. So now we'll go to track seven and we'll save this. Save this recording. Assign to five, go over to five, go to playback trig, four bars. Let's hear how it sounds. Cool. Anyhow, I hope that this uh, tutorial helped you with your Octatrack. Thank you for watching this video. Have a good night.